Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some high-end emulators on AMD's all-new 7000 series integrated graphics. As a lot of you already know, AMD released their 7000 series CPUs and they do perform really well. We've got the 7600X, the 7700X, and the 7950X. And to tell you the truth, even using the lowest end SKU, which as of making this video is the 7600X, that has more than enough CPU power to handle any emulator that's on the market right now. I mean, anything you can think of, that thing's going to run, even at the stock clocks. And when it comes down to emulation, first and foremost, the most important thing is your CPU performance. Be it single thread, and with these newer emulators, multi-thread really helps out. And back in the day, for lower end emulators, even like N64, your CPU was really what you wanted to choose. You could throw any kind of graphics at it and you could run it at full speed as long as your CPU had enough power. But nowadays, the GPU does play a major role in emulation especially upscaling your favorite retro games. Now, playing a console game at its native resolution on PC is great and all, but taking, let's say, GameCube up to 4K does really change the whole dynamic, and with something like that, it does require a little bit of GPU power. So in this video, with these higher-end emulators, I'm not worried at all if the CPU has enough power to run them. What I'm worried about is the integrated graphics in these new 7000 series chips. Now, if you're not familiar with these, they are based on our DNA 2, so we got a nice little upgrade from Vega, but we only have two compute units built in with these integrated graphics, so they're not made for gaming, and if you do want to check out some PC games running on this new iGPU, I'll leave a link to a video I created in the description. But for this video here, we're going to be checking out high-end emulation running on these new 7000 series chips with only integrated graphics. Alright, so starting off light here with PSP, using the standalone version of PPSSPP, 5x resolution, Vulcan back in, and yeah, we could have went up with the resolution here, but it still looks great like this, and this is one of the harder games to emulate. Give it a try on a lower end system and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, but when it comes to the lower end stuff, this system's going to handle it just fine with those integrated graphics. Up next, we've got some PS2 emulation using PCSX2. We're at 1080p, and this is the emulator I started seeing that iGPU struggle with. So 1080p is really good, but as you can see with Afterburner, we do max that GPU out here at 1080. So going up to 1440 and 4K is kind of out of the question with the built-in iGPU. Now the CPU, like I mentioned, has more than enough power to handle any of these emulators at full speed. What's happening now is we're just not able to upscale anymore with PS2 uh, using the DirectX 11 backend or even Vulkan with the new development builds. But as you can see, it does handle it at 1080p. And don't get me wrong, there are easier to emulate games that we could probably go up to 4K with. Something that comes to mind is like Crash Bandicoot. But for the harder to emulate games, 1080p is kind of the limit for this new iGPU. And that seems to be the case across the board. Here we have some Wii U using SimU. We're at 1080p Vulcan, and trying to go up to 1440 with this does bring me down to around 52 FPS on average. But as soon as I brought that resolution back down to 1080p, we're up to 60 FPS, and even something like Breath of the Wild will run at 1080p 60 FPS on this chip with the iGPU. And remember, in this machine, we're using the 7700X, but I'll tell you, the 7600X would also do the same thing. We're not maxing out all of the cores in this CPU, and we've got the same GPU with that 7600X. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those CPUs on hand. I've only got the 7700X and the 7950X, which is just way overkill. That thing's got 16 cores and 32 threads. Yeah, it's going to do the same thing here, given we have the same iGPU, but we've got a lot more CPU in that one. But one of these emulators that really impressed me, given that we're using built-in AMD graphics, was the original Xbox emulator known as CXBX Reloaded. This game here, Panzer Dragoon, on older Vega chips just really didn't do well. Even on something like the 5700G, which does offer overall better GPU performance out of the iGPU, struggled with this one. But on the 7700X with that 2CU iGPU, we're running at full speed. And this is really coming down to the performance the new Zen 4 architecture puts out on these chips. But you might notice that with this emulator, we're only at 720p. I actually did not try it at 1080 because I know that this does favor NVIDIA GPUs. But there's a chance we could go up to 1080 with this. It still looks great at 720 and this was really the only setting I tested with. 
So far, with the higher-end emulators, we've got 1080p, we've got 720 with some of them, but with Dolphin, which has been on the market for a while, 1440p is totally possible on this new iGPU, and it'll run any GameCube or Wii game as long as it's compatible with the emulator itself. So yeah, even something like F-Zero GX, which is a harder one to emulate on lower-end devices, on one of the most intensive courses, Fire Field runs at 60fps at 1440p on this iGPU. And since the Dolphin emulator also runs Wii games, I figured I'd throw one in here. We've got Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit, 1440p, still using the Vulcan backend, same settings we were using with F-Zero GX, running at full speed. And if you take a look at Afterburner, you'll see that that GPU does hit 100% every once in a while, but the CPU usage is very low here, and we've got a really high clock on this 7700X. Up next, we've got some Xbox 360 using the Xenia emulator, and going into this, I knew we weren't going to get great performance out of this iGPU. Now, running this with a dedicated GPU, even something like a GTX 1650 will net you around 150 FPS out of Forza 2, and you can run Red Dead at 60, but on this new iGPU, it's really, really lagging. So with Red Dead here, we're at 15 FPS, and that GPU is just totally maxed out. There's nothing else we can do with this iGPU and the 360 emulator right now. But I'll tell you what, these integrated graphics did way better than I thought they would with PS3 emulation. Here's RPCS3. With this game here, Demon's Souls, we're at 1080p using the Vulcan pack in. Now, not all of these games are going to run at 1080, and you're still going to run into issues with the games that aren't fully compatible with this emulator like God of War 3, but you can definitely play PS3 on these integrated graphics. Games like Ninja Gaiden and Tekken 6 were able to run at 1080p, no problem at all, but when I moved over to a harder to emulate one, Skate 3, I had to drop it down to 720p. At 1080, I was around 55 FPS, and uh, even at 720, you'll see that GPU max out, but I haven't seen anything dip here. And through all of my testing so far, these are the highest temps I saw, but if you take a look at that CPU package power, playing the PS3 version of Skate 3 here at 720p, the CPU is pulling around 106 watts. This is just one of those games for this emulator that loves those extra cores and threads. Now the final emulator I wanted to test here was Yuzu for Switch. Personally, I don't like showing off gameplay for a reason, so I've got it blurred out, but we can see Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, and I'm sure you can get an idea of what game this is. We're in dock mode right now using async shaders, and these games actually run really well. So in dock mode, I believe this is running at 1080p. You can swap over to handheld mode if you want to lower that CPU usage. I believe it'll bring it down to 720. But even at 1080, these Switch games run great with the Yuzu emulator on these integrated graphics. So overall, not bad at all. You can definitely get away with some really great emulation on these integrated graphics. And I just can't stress this enough. The CPUs here have more than enough power. So if you did add a discrete GPU, even something like a 1650, you could get away with everything we saw here at 4K except for Xbox 360. That would be around 1080p, but it still looks great and it would be perfectly playable with a lower end GPU. If you've checked out any of my AMD videos, be it on mini PCs or new APUs, you know I love these integrated graphics and I was really interested to see how they handled emulation. I knew it wasn't going to be phenomenal, but you can definitely play your favorite emulators on this machine without a discrete GPU. And when AMD initially announced these new Zen 4 chips, they specifically stated that this iGPU is not made for gaming whatsoever. It's more just so you have video out in case you need to do a little bit of testing without a discrete GPU. It can also offload some video decoding and things like that, but that's definitely not going to stop us from trying to game on this iGPU, be it, uh, you know, AAA games or emulation. And by the way, if you're interested in checking out PC game performance on this exact iGPU, I've got a video linked in the description, one that I recently made, so uh, definitely check that out. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this iGPU, just let me know in the comments below. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on the emulation performance that this thing was putting out with those integrated graphics. Personally, I think if somebody wanted to do a build right now just for emulation, they could go with like the 7600X. If they wanted to use new parts and they could play for now, save a little bit of money, they could do 1080 and 720 with the things we saw in this video. And then later on down the road, they could add a discrete GPU. Even if it's a GTX 1650, you're still going to get great performance. And like I mentioned, most of this stuff is going to do 4K on that 1650 just fine. So let me know your thoughts down below. But that's it for this one. And like always, Thanks for watching.